Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Kenny Wallace Show, brought to you by Jags, the leader in high-performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to jags.com for everything you need to fix your hot rods up. Well, as you can tell, we are here at the Minnesota airport, and we are going to talk a little bit about Talladega. You usually don't break the races down, but there was so much. This one had it all, right? It had a lot of controversy, especially Chase Elliott getting the tow back to the back to the pits. Chase Elliott got his car towed back. <laughs> That's the highlight. All right, let's sit down here. Okay, so um, Ricky Stenhouse. Ricky wins it by .006 over William Byron in second, Brad Keselowski in third. Now, I watched this complete race on the airplane. Had, had, had NBC right there, it, it, big as all get out. So, um, you know, we see the difference between first and second. We saw the big wreck, right? By the way, Herminator's not like, I'm not like Larry Mack, but NBC did a good job. Did you know that was the biggest wreck in Talladega history? 28 car pileup. That's what they said. If it's wrong, get, get mad at NBC because it was on the screen. So the biggest wreck at Talladega history, 28 cars involved. And I think it was that gap. I, I mentioned that 30 seconds ago. What happens? You have the leader out front, Cindric. Well, it's kind of tied every once in a while. There was three and four wide all day long. Way more four way wide. Hey, Kenny, get, get it out of your mouth. Cl clean your mouth up, Wallace. <laughs> so not really sure why they were more four wide than I've ever seen. Listen, everybody says, hey, Wallace, you ever have any success there? I had a lot of success there. But, you know, I always did my deal like this. If I could lead, I would lead if my car was fast. If my car wasn't fast, then I would say, let me know when there's 10 to go, and I would time it. And back in my day, it was always like, if you want to stay out of trouble, be up front. Now, that's a damn joke. If you're up front, you're going to wreck. So the leader, and we see this all the time now. We see it all the time. Cendric's leading, and there's this gap, right? And, and, and here comes Brad Keselowski. You, you can't blame this on Brad Keselowski because as soon as he hits Cendric, then Joey Logano's hitting him. And let me tell you, as a race car driver, you're driving like this, and all you can see is the car in front of you through the – you're looking through the windshield, and you're listening to your spotter. When you're bumper to bumper like that, you're just – you're like an idiot. I, I, you, you really are. You're like, duh, and, and you're there. You know, you're, you know, you're trying to prove you're worth it. I'm a gladiator. I'm a badass. But in really, in reality, you're a dumbass because you're just bumper to bumper, and you're doing what that car in front of you is doing. So when Brad Keselowski had that big closing rate, Cindric got out there too far, and Brad goes to bump him, and he's doing the right thing. Well, he goes to bump him. Well, then Joey Logano bumps him, and they all come piling in. So it, it's hard to go, well, Brad, Brad Keselowski, run into him. No, he went to pop. He went to get up to him, and then, then the push becomes bigger than it's supposed to be, and they all wreck Cinder. All right, we get through that. I uh, can't be long-winded here be, just because the race was too exciting, too much going on. I'm not going to break it down lap by lap. This is for all of you, uh, you know, that didn't see everything, want to know the highlights. So I just t I told you the highlight, the big one. That was the big one, took out a record 28 cars. Told you how it happened. All right, let's get around to the finish line here. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse, he wins it by, you know, he wins it. Okay, not going to repeat myself. <laughs> oh, almost caught myself. Okay, I want to talk about Ricky Stenhouse for a minute here. And Ricky is a very dear friend of mine. I mean, listen, I don't, I don't say this if I don't mean it. I mean, we're, 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 we're friends. Me and Stenhouse, we, we're, we're friends, but not great friends. But if I see Ricky, we're going to high five, give a man hug. The thing myself and Ricky Stenhouse have in common is we're dirt racers, right? Uh, Jennifer and Richard Marshall, Priority Aviation, they sponsor me. Well, they're with Ricky too. So that's 
why we're such good friends. So when I, I said all that, because I want to I say this a little bit, and I don't want it to come across the wrong way. Ricky is that type of driver. Just when you think he's not doing good enough, right? You know what I'm saying. Ah, uh, Stenhouse not doing good enough. He, he, oh, he wins again. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He wins the Daytona 500. Man, Stenhouse hasn't done anything all year long. Oh, he just won again. Ricky Stenhouse, two wins on the year. That's why he is a cup driver. He deserves it. And it don't matter where you win. You can say, you can say Shane Van Gisbergen, and all he does is win on road courses. What do you want me to do? He's still winning. You could say Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Dale Jr. All they did was win on the big tracks. And they did win everywhere, no doubt. But you understand my point. My point is this. Ricky Stenhouse wins. His timing is a gift from God. I mean, and he was so awesome after that race. <laughs> I almost wanted to give him the nickname like we give Helio Castro Neves Spider-Man. If you didn't watch it, somebody's going to have it out there. Ricky was calmly jacked up on Mountain Dew. He climbed up the flag stand and then jumped over to the fence. <laughs> and and he, he gave a shout out because, you know, you're close to Mississippi. He's from Olive Branch, Mississippi. What a badass name. Ricky Stenhouse from Olive Branch, Mississippi. So anyway, um, all right, now for the controversy at hand, the big controversy. All right, I made a big video four or five days ago. Uh, NASCAR designed this car wrong. They know it. Their backs are against the wall. Now, I'm not going to belabor the point, but hey, how you doing, race fans? We're finishing the Kenny Wallace show up. Awesome. All right. I just got to, I can't be embarrassed. Got to keep digging. So anyway, what happens is they designed the car wrong. And they said, they said, you know, Josh Berry spun out. All the tires went flat at Kansas City. And they wouldn't, pound, they wouldn't tow him back because the NASCAR rules state if you have flat tires and you cannot drive your car back, you're out of the race. All right, we already know that because I made a video about it. So they have this big wreck. Well, well, there's guys with flat tires and they're stuck in the grass. They can't go anywhere. So now there's this big game going on. Everybody leaves their window nets up because NASCAR rules state if your window net comes down, that, that's a signal that I'm okay, come pick me up. <laughs> you saw it play out. All the drivers were keeping their window nets up at the Talladega wreck, the 28 car wreck, just, you know, tow me back. Well, okay, this is kind of an, a joke. Whose car do they tow back pretty much first? Only our most popular driver, Chase Elliott. <laughs> don't, don't you know NASCAR's like, oh, Jesus. So there's the innuendo. Oh, we'll pick up our most popular driver first. So that goes bad. Uh, but I I'll, I'll do want to say this. Nobody flipped. So I believe those adjustments, they made a little adjustment up there on the, the arrow flap. They made a, a difference uh, right in, in front of the right rear tire. That helped. Nobody flipped. So good job, NASCAR. Nobody flipped. Uh, but th they, they got an issue. They got an issue. And... and when they get to winter time, when that last race is over, they have got to fix this because those flat tires and those guys never not being able to put it in gear and drive back to the pits, it is backing NASCAR in a corner. And, and, and it's like, how, what do you do? Because it's like, okay, that car won't move. Uh, well, pick that car up. You know, I mean, they don't mean anything wrong, but because the cars won't move, the drivers can't drive them back. Even though they've been in a wreck, you got one flat tire, it won't go. You got a left for a flat, and it won't go. All right, everybody. I think we broke it down, and uh, we got Jerry Hoffman, I think, coming up on Tuesday for a Kenny Conversation. Jerry Hoffman on Kenny Conversation. He owns Springfield, Missouri Dirt Track. He, he's a character. All right, until the next Kenny Wallace show, we just keep on rolling.